First off here, we, we want to take away the diffuse contribution uh, completely because glass doesn't contain any diffuse. If I enable here now re refraction gain here, we can see here we, we start to get something. It still looks a bit funky here. We, we don't have any reflection here, so I'm going to enable reflection, start to get something. As you can see here, these two objects here behave a bit differently. Glass is heavily geometry dependent. For example, this one here is essentially an open surface in most cases here so to fix this look here so it looks a bit better we need to add something called a render geometry settings here and i want to target essentially these two objects and add especially this one here we can we can start with this one shader ball so we know what we're targeting so i'm gonna take this uh, material swatch here in my thing graph here do slash slash and see here what we get. So at the moment, nothing happened. I need to go to the Renderman tab and say Trace and say, let's see here, Max Diffuse and Max Specular here. And we can start to up this here. For example, here, you can see here, if I set it to zero, we get no refract refraction limit. So if one, now we'll get one bounce before it returns to, and it depends on how many geometries. So I essentially here have a bunch of objects overlapping and there's also like a, a sphere within the sphere and this sphere also have a thickness so you, you might need to up this to at least like six or seven or even more depending on how many geometries you want to see through there the, the main for glass is the specular and let's take a look at what we can do here with this one you can see here this one looks a bit funky we might need to have another override here for for, for the snail uh, so we can make this one snail the glass here is essentially single sided in most of it so this one will not shade as good so yeah geometry is uh, very important when it comes to shading glass okay so let's now focus here on this shader ball i'm just gonna hide this and we can see here i'm gonna go back to my pixel surface and take a look at some of the shader settings here so we have the refraction color if i would tint this and we can see here what happens it starts to to tint the refraction this is not taking thickness into account so essentially there is no accumulation of uh, color when you do coloring like this that's something that you can do with absorption and that makes a bit more realistic effect if you want to tint your glass and take thickness into account we're gonna take a look at that roughness here this is a bit of a head scratch we have like uh, four different roughness <laughs> It, it's it's nuts this one uh, to be honest this is essentially uh, the the gist of it if you set this roughness up to something here you you start to make something like a frosted glass and you see both the reflection and refraction is reacting here now so we we can't get a clear coating on top of this what you can do here is essentially is to set this refraction roughness to instead of minus one here if we take this roughness down to zero and and set refraction roughness up to something about one you will then start to get essentially a, a rough material but with a clear reflection on top here when when this one converts here you will start to see this especially here if i make this uh if I tint this one, it will be more evident here soon. But then you also have this refraction roughness too. So this one is a bit of a head scratcher to me. I, I don't really use uh, this one uh, that often. But essentially you have a, a second roughness here. And you also have a blend factor between this one. So you can have a tint here, a tint down there. And then blend between these two. So yeah. I never really use the second roughness and but if I for example set now set this refraction roughness blend up to one it takes the tint here and this roughness value that we see here but now if I uh, set the blend back to zero it will start to take this value and and the roughness coming from this slider so I don't really know why we have two roughness values or uh, three roughness values to be honest and let's take a look and uh, resetting this one back I'm gonna reset this one to zero and now take a look at the advanced here what we have so we have anisotropic 
the same as the other specular lobes and you have if you haven't seen those one take a look at that in the next episode we're gonna take a look at the glass absorption if you want to support my channel consider dropping a comment in one of the videos with information of upcoming episodes you want to see from measurement studio see you in the channel bye bye